Tonight's top story, Singapore has unveiled an extra $48 billion to support the people or its people and businesses through the COVID-19 pandemic. When combined with the initial package announced at the national budget last month, Singapore will spend a total of $55 billion or 11% of GDP to respond to the situation. The government has obtained in principle approval from the president to draw up to $17 billion from the national reserves to fund the latest tranche of support. It's only the second time such a measure has been taken. The first was during the global financial crisis when $4.9 billion was used to protect Singapore's economy. Outlining what he called the resilience budget in Parliament today, Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiet says it is a landmark package that is necessary for a unique situation. The budget aims to save jobs, support workers and protect livelihoods. This includes measures like higher co-funding of wages and cash payouts for freelancers. Families and the less well-off will also benefit. The budget will also help firms overcome immediate challenges like cash flow and cost pressures. For example, enhanced property tax rebates are in the pipeline. And to help Singapore emerge stronger from the situation, the government will invest in long-term growth and further encourage businesses to build their capabilities. Now, a closer look at the financial package uh, with Patrick Tay, chairman of the Singapore's Government uh, Parliamentary Committee for Manpower. He's also Assistant Secretary General of NTUC. Uh, firstly, over one-third of the $48 billion uh, resilience budget has been dedicated to saving jobs, supporting our workers and protecting livelihoods. As a Labour MP, what stood out for you in uh, Deputy Prime Minister Heng's speech this afternoon? I think uh, it's really an extraordinary budget uh, for this extraordinary crisis uh, and difficult period for workers and businesses in general. I think I particularly like the very, very impactful focus uh, on saving jobs, supporting workers, and in particular, protecting livelihoods. Firms will be getting more support to cope with the challenges in cash flow, cost, and credit. So which of these areas are our businesses most concerned about at this point? And with the COVID-19 situation still evolving, how much will this resilience budget actually help to allay their fears? Mm. I think depending on the industry or sector the businesses and companies are in, likewise also depending on the size, whether they are multinationals, large local enterprises, SMEs, startups, or even micro SMEs, they would face uh, different challenges, whether in terms of cash flow, uh, cost, uh, or even credit. I think uh, in general, most businesses uh, will, will encounter costs, in particular manpower costs, uh, as well as operating costs being uh, one of the most uh, you know, challenging uh, concerns uh, and issues which uh, companies will face. So I think uh, in this uh, resilience budget, a lot of this are addressing manpower costs, addressing uh, operating costs uh, to help alleviate some of the concerns uh, of many of the businesses now uh, operating in this difficult time. Well, enhanced support packages will be put into place to help the hardest hit sectors, aviation for one, and tourism related industries. Uh, what will it achieve at this juncture, especially for SMEs in these sectors? Yes, uh, uh, you know, uh, I met many of the bosses in some of these uh, SMEs in these sectors. I think they are very hard hit. Uh, in terms of travel, in terms of companies that support the aviation sector, for example. So I think in general, there's uh, um, a lot of anxieties, a lot of fears, not just with the companies and businesses, but also with the workers on the ground who are working in these companies. So I think we have this uh, added support to these more hard hit and uh, more deeply affected sectors, it will provide some relief. As you can also see that uh, many of the funding subsidies and measures are till the end of the year. So I think this will help uh, provide relief uh, and, and, of course, uh, allay some of the fears and concerns. Patrick, you know, in terms of saving jobs and supporting our workers, the government has extended a lifeline to the gig workers through the support measures for the self-employed. This includes also encouragement to upskill and digitize. How critical is that and how are our gig workers coping so far? Yeah, this is very important because if you look at uh, our makeup of our labour force now, we have almost 200,000 gig workers in Singapore, i.e. we call them freelance self-employed, otherwise known as own account workers. So it's a very sizable population and because of uh, the various restrictions, the various uh, hard hit sectors, many of our gig workers in various sectors, for example, uh, grab drivers, private hire drivers, um, 
tra uh, tourist guides, uh, even those in the creative sector, uh, your ge tai MCs, performers, uh, including lighting cameramen, photographers, uh, event organizers, and uh, you know the impact is quite great. Particularly, uh, uh, for example, schools stopping CCAs. So even the sports coaches uh, have have uh, been hung and high and dry. So I think the measures will be very targeted to help freelance and self-employed, which is a growing uh, working population in Singapore. And do you think that enough has been done with this sector in particular? And is there sort of scope to for further sort of yes. help coming their way? Yes, I think in the budget just five weeks ago, we talked about um, giving uh, training support to the training support scheme uh, for uh, the freelance and self-employed. Uh, today, uh, we heard at the supplementary budget the income relief scheme. So I think that it will be an added uh, boon uh, to help uh, allay the day-to-day -day livelihoods and concerns of many of these freelance and self-employed who may be actually uh, not having any work at all during this period. This will be, provide a very targeted, very specific and uh, impactful relief for them. So what additional support will the Labour Union look to provide to workers who lose their jobs or see significantly reduced incomes as the impact of COVID-19 on our economy then starts to deepen? Yes, uh, through our various schemes, I think we have announced uh, two uh, support measures, the, the, the training support for the freelance and self-employed, as well as our, our UK fund has also come forward to help those affected uh, by this COVID-19. But over and above that, uh, through other measures um, that we have already announced, for example, uh, encouraging training uh, and using training uh, as a form of helping workers uh, prepare uh, for the future, at the same time also to, to tide over the, the current period to the various uh, training support measures. Likewise, also we have been uh, uh, sharing about the, the Job Security Council. I think that's one next step we're going to do. Um, the Job Security Council hopes to uh, help workers uh, you know, in, in the event of um, any layoffs to help them segue into job openings in a, ver a variety of sectors which are still hiring. All right, thank you so much for speaking to us, Patrick. Speaking there to Patrick Tay, Chairman of Singapore's Government Parliamentary Committee for Manpower.